Can you tell me uh, this whole situation with Discovery is eaten alive? Yeah. There's some drama and controversy around that. Can you explain that whole saga with Discovery, with um, with your whole effort? Maybe outside of even the drama, the the initial thing, <laughs> which I now uh, feel uh, you're sufficiently insane to actually do of being yeah. eaten by an anaconda. Is that actually possible to survive something like that? I mean, if it, anaconda swallows you while you're wearing the suit that they made, maybe. But that was, in hindsight, whether that was the result of, look, I go to the jungle and you start seeing these beautiful places, these incredible species. You start developing a relationship with these animals and then you watch it get destroyed. Every year we watch it burn. Every year places that are are crucial to my soul, I have seen leveled and turned to ash. And at some point we started going, someone has to do something about this. And you look to your right and you look to your left and there is no one because it's the middle of the Amazon. And the rainforests have been being destroyed since the seventies, it's a cliche. And so we started trying to do something about it. And so I started putting a little bit more eff emphasis on, on publicity, a little bit more emphasis on getting the message out there. And so I started trying to see how, what was gonna work. You know, you just start firing shots in the dark and seeing, and you know, JJ's going, you have to help us do something. And I'm going, okay, you know? And so from 18 years old now, now I'm 23 years old. And all of a sudden this place isn't, isn't foreign to me anymore, it's, it's home. And and so when you're trying to think of all the different ways you can bring attention to this place that you care about that's being destroyed. Yeah, you're standing next to a boulder of progress of of destruction, and it's about to roll onto the forest and just destroy it and snuff out all that life, and no one's there to do anything about it. And so you go, is there any way that I could put myself in front of this boulder and hold it back? Mm -hmm. And you're talking about you know the. the Glo the global economic reality. Uh, it's just it's just such a massive, it's systemic. So what's the most dramatic possible thing I could do? Exactly. <laughs> so when you find yourself flown to LA as a 23 year old dude, and uh, you're sitting there with some guy, you know, who's like spinning a pen and got his feet up on the desk and going, you know, what can you show us down there? And you go, I could show you the biggest anacondas in the world. And we could talk yeah. about mercury and bioaccumulation. And we could show people how these animals are misunderstood. and we go on a big expedition and we could be the coolest show ever. And he goes, yeah, not good enough. Hmm. And you go, okay. And so those, that, 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 that cycled through a bunch of times. And someone at some point in one of those meetings said, you know, what if we show people that anacondas really can't eat humans? And I went, how is that a good show? You want me to feed someone to an anaconda? And I said, I said, I mean, and I kind of joked, like, what if, you know, I was like, the only way that's feasible is if you like make a suit with a breathing apparatus and let the snake eat you and then come back out safely and make sure you don't hurt the snake. And they were like, kid, you're on. And I was like, oh shit. So I should mention as a small tangent, I think I mentioned to you offline, uh, due to travel troubles, <laughs> where I traveled to the totally wrong part of the United States um, on my way to Boston. Uh, and on my way to Boston, I did a conversation with uh, Mr. Beast, yeah. Jimmy, and I got a chance to hang out with him for the day. And one of the things we did is have a lengthy brainstorm session with his team, or I was I was observing it. Sure, sure. Um, but it was interesting because he's probably way better at that conversation that you had with the with the guy in L.A. Yeah. than the guy in L.A. Obviously, yeah. because he's made. He's revolutionizing entertainment and he's also doing philanthropy. Yeah. Yeah. Which he's trying to figure out how to help the world with that kind of stuff. So I would love to actually I'll send him a message to see what what his thoughts just brainstorm. He's yeah. so strong at this. Yeah. Literally take the situation you're facing. Yeah. Here's the place that I really care about is yeah. being burned down. It's being destroyed. Uh what's the sexy video? <laughs> yeah. Well, how do you get how do you get people to watch something that's you know, we all change the channel when they show us the kids in Africa with the swollen stomachs. Nobody wants to see it. And it's like, with the rainforest, that like, we know, we know, we know. And I'm going, I could give data all day long. I could show photos of burning forest. And so I was looking for what would do it. And so the eating Alive thing, without spending too much time on a, on a massive misstep was, I agreed to do it. 
They paid me at the time more money than I had made before, which I very much needed because nobody pays you to be a conservationist. Um, so I was a very poor 23 year old that was like, yes, I, I would love that, please. And I thought, you know what, this is the start of a TV career. Yeah. Um, we got we got shafted so bad. I mean, they used uh, somehow they changed our voices, they changed the things we said, they changed the message of the film. There was one point where we had caught a 19 foot snake, and I was holding her head, and I said, "This is such a beautiful animal, mm -hmm. the queen of the Amazon." This is such a great moment for me. I kissed her on the head. I said, she's made so many babies. Look at the scars. I was talking about just the poetry of this incredible yeah. dragon. And then the producer goes, yeah, 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 that's great. Listen, if that was to bite you, what would happen? And I was like, oh, well, if it bit you, you know, you'd bleed out because it would lacerate down to the, that's what they put in the film. And so day of, they, sh they didn't show me the film until the night before I went on Matt Lauer's show. And I said, I am not endorsing this film. And they had called it Expedition on the call sheet. They'd called it Expedition EA, Expedition Amazon. All of a sudden, they changed it to Eaten Alive. And I went, wait, guys, wait, wait, wait. I said, you're going to make people think that it actually happened, not that we're attempting it. And they and I said, I'm not. And then they called me and they said, you better, you're going on live TV tomorrow. They said, you let us know what level of control we need to show for you, right? And it was a very threatening phone call. And uh, so I had to go out and smile for the cameras and endorse something that was a train wreck. And the the scientific community was like, you're an idiot. We don't want to ever see you again. I lost a lot of opportunities. PETA came, which, you know, PETA, whatever. But PETA came out. People were like, you, you, you were trying to hurt a snake, which I would never do. And then the American public was like, you know, you said you were going to get eaten by a snake and you didn't. And so yeah. everyone was pissed. I basically had to exile myself to India for like six months and just, I mean, I had death threats coming through all my messages. What's People that? were furious with me what gave you strength to that how, how difficult was that psychologically just everything you care about being completely kind of flipped upside down i've spent so much time on the ground with the local people learning from the wildlife it's such a devout and important thing to me and it got turned into a a sideshow it got turned into a joke and then not just a joke it got turned into that i'm somehow bad to animals you know i'm I'm um, um, irresponsible scientifically. Jimmy Kimmel told me to have sex with a hippo as my next stunt. Like it was like, it, it got really ugly and it misfired so bad. And when you hear these like motivational speakers talk about, you know, you just got to keep trying and sometimes you're going to fail hard. It was like that one I got hit in the head with a baseball bat. That one was tough. And uh, at the time I was like, I'm fine. And I was like, I'm going to go away for a while. You know, and and I learned a lot though. Like at this point, I'm still glad I did it because man, did I learn a lot about what a, what a room full of people that you don't know who could look you in the eye and shake your hand and say, trust us. Ooh, boy. Do you, do you have on a human level resentment towards discovery, towards the people involved? Are you able to forgive them? I don't care. It, it, it literally, they, that's what they do. You know, they literally put out a documentary saying that mermaids were real. You know, it's wait a minute, wait a minute. They're not. Listen, <laughs> no. Uh, I said, did, <laughs> I'm not even touching that one. But, <laughs> it, I mean, is <laughs> it is true. It is true. The, the document there is a there is a documentary where they duped a bunch of scientists who are like oceanographers, and they like showed them ancient footage of you know mariners saying that seals were mermaids. Who cares? It's 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 it's. I was young. I got brought to Hollywood, and I got spit out the other side, and that's on me. That's not their fault. You know, you there's that, you know, you don't the, the there's that parable about the frog who gives the scorpion a ride across the water. And then at the end he says, I'll give you a ride, just don't sting me. And they get to the other side and the scorpion stings him. And the frog goes, Why did you do that? And the scorpion goes, I'm a scorpion. Yeah. That's it's not their fault. <laughs>